the mall. Chemists have needed a method to convert from measurements made on the macroscopic scale to the models of matter that exist on a very, very different scale, the atomic scale. Fortunately, we have the mole. The mole helps us go from the macroscopic measurement to the models uh, on the microscopic scale. This hasn't always been the case, of course. Uh, as this science of chemistry evolved in the early 1700s, what chemists did to study matter was very carefully weigh stuff. Weigh stuff as it underwent a chemical change. Weigh it again after the change. Weigh stuff as it went through a physical change. Weigh it again before and after and compare those difference in weights. And as they were doing this in the 1700s, the, the, the models were developing as to, to how things were changing, the relative mass scales of the different elements that they were creating, and so uh, they started developing models to explain what they, they were experiencing in the lab. And the models um, to explain how stuff was changing um, led us to the atomic theory very early on in the 1800s, and it was fully developed in the 1900s. So we still live in the macroscopic world, even though we know a lot about the microscopic world, and so we're constantly having to go back and forth between what we see and what we can measure on the macroscopic scale and the models that allow us to predict and understand what's happening on the macroscopic scale. And those models are the atomic model and the chemist's view of the world. Okay, so we need a way to go back and forth between the, 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 the macro scale and the micro scale. Well, as it turns out, um, early on, uh, as the scientists were, were becoming to understand in the 1700s the um, matter and how it changed, they developed a, an, a mass unit type of a scale. All the elements that they were that they were discovering in the compounds, they could relate on this kind of relative mass unit scale. And what they found was that hydrogen was the lightest element, and so it was assigned a value of one atomic mass unit. Oxygen was about 16 times heavier, so it's 16 atomic mass units. Carbon, about 12 times greater, 12 atomic mass units. So we have this relative scale for the smallest bit of matter which was becoming to be known as the atom and some kind of relative scale. All right, but it's very, very tiny, so we need a very, very big number to relate that tiny um, uh, model to the macroscopic scale. And that big number is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. That's the number that we call the mole, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Well, why did we choose that big number to relate the macroscopic world with the microscopic world? Well, that's because 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd is the number of carbon-12 atoms in 12 grams of carbon-12. Carbon-12 is an isotope of carbon that has a mass number of 12, 6 neutrons and 6 protons. And so it turns out that um, this number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, that's the number of atoms that weighs 12 grams. And so, therefore, we say one mole of carbon-12 weighs 12 grams. And because there was already this relative scale, then that means that one mole of hydrogen weighs one gram. One mole of oxygen weighs 16 grams. So we're able to, to um, define now a mass scale that can be related to the number of particles that exist in that particular mass. Okay, so here's some examples of a mole of various pure substances. This is a mole of copper, and it happens to weigh 64 grams. And this small beaker is a mole of aluminum, weighing 27 grams. Here we have a mole of sulfur, and it weighs 28 grams. Let's skip over here. What is that? That's water. And what, that is one mole of water, and it weighs 18 grams. Over here, that's copper 2 chloride, and it weighs 135 grams, one mole of it. All right? So you can see, you know, one mole of these various pure substances weigh these various uh, masses, and those are called the molar masses, and you can see about how much of each one of those that you have. Now, what about one mole of, um, of oh, let's just say a pencil eraser. 
how how much how much space would one mole of a pencil eraser take up? If if one mole of water takes up, oh, it looks to be about 20 milliliters, 18 milliliters of volume. What about one mole of pencil erasers? Well, as it turns out, one mole of pencil erasers, you know, just your average pencil eraser on the end of your number two pencil, well, that one mole of, of, of those pencil erasers would cover the surface of the earth to a depth of 500 meters. Okay, so the mole is only a convenient unit of measure for very, very, very tiny things. It brings up the mass of those very, very tiny things to a place um, on, a, on a scale that we can see, uh, say, on a lab bench. But one mole of anything else is beyond comprehension. All right, so the mole, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Why is it also called Avogadro's number? Well, it's called Avogadro's number because Avogadro didn't come up with the number, but he was a scientist working very hard in the 1700s on some way of relating the number of uh, atoms of elements to the amount of atoms and elements. He was the one who came up with the relationship between the volume and he projected or predicted that uh, they we, scientists would come up with a number that could very easily relate. Uh, on the gram scale, the number of moles, or excuse me, the number of particles uh, for a given uh, mass units. Um, so he, he gets the name associated with it. Now, the abbreviation for the mole, sometimes you'll see it uh, abbreviated MOL. That's a common abbreviation for the mole um, when it's found in uh, units, next to units. Also, um, in equations, when you're referring to the number of items, um, you in a mole or Avogadro's number. Sometimes it's a capital N with a, an A next to it. That's another way we abbreviate Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And another way um, that we abbreviate, well, Avogadro's number really means 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of something. And the, another way we abbreviate within um, formulas, the number of moles is the lowercase n. So you'll see these various representations of the mole. Um, depending on, on um, the equation and what you're working on. Do you need to memorize this number, 6.022 times to the 23rd? Yes, you do. It's very important. It's worth memorizing. How will you use the number? Well, because we're always flipping back and forth between thinking macro, thinking micro, um, you'll use the, the number in a variety of ways. Um, someone might ask you, for example, um, how many um, carbon dioxide molecules um, are there in um, two grams of carbon dioxide, all right? And if that's the case, if they want to know the actual number of molecules, then you're going and you're given a mass, then you're going to have to convert from the mass of the carbon dioxide to the moles of carbon dioxide to the number of molecules of carbon dioxide, okay? And so to do that, you would need to use the molar mass of carbon dioxide, and then you'd have to use Avogadro's number to convert from the moles to the number, and that is that one mole equals 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, okay? Um, the molar mass of carbon dioxide, how do you figure that out? Well, you know, you look at the periodic table, and you find the molar mass of carbon, which is 12 grams per mole, and the molar mass of oxygen, which is 16 grams per mole, and of course there's two of those. So it would be 12 plus 2 times 16 is 44 grams per mole. So we have a way to convert from mass to moles to actual number of molecules.